Oh, we have some sunshine. It's not gonna last very long, so I decided to step out on the patio, show you the damage of the past 10 days while we still have some conditions that are feasible for filming. Open mic, more sound distortions. I hope you can hear me. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. It's not gonna be a pretty sight, but that is the reality of what I am dealing with in my circumstances with my outdoor orchids. And if you're gonna watch the whole video, Thank you for the support. Thank you for keeping me going <laughs> mentally as well as motivationally, let's just say, because it has been bleak in the past 10 days. So, shall we? Even though we're going to see some terrible footage on this video, oh, it would help my self-esteem if you would like the video regardless. Thank you so, so much. And if you would like to give me an extra boost of motivation, please subscribe. <laughs> Let's start with the east side while there is still some sun. Let me make sure I don't put the shadows on you. It's all a bit raw. It's probably all looking a little bit grubby, but that's what I'm dealing with. I'm not cleaning here because it's just pointless. It's like having an argument with a dog in his ball. It makes no sense. Let the dog have the ball, that kind of thing. Anyway, what we're looking at is Fias Tancanvillier. Took a huge beating. I had this orchid up against the back wall to make sure it gets protected from the major, major windstorm that we have had. That wasn't good enough. And you can see how much has broken. All the leaves have kind of come off. They've bent, they've folded under the pressure. But not only that, look at all the spotting, look at all the cold damage. It's sad, very, very sad. But you know what? I always try to keep my leaves as pristine as possible for as long as possible. But I know that eventually they are going to suffer. The fact they've suffered so soon is just testament to how bad the conditions were. The night temperatures were at five degrees Celsius continuously, but now they've gone up to 10. I know it's only a five degrees differential, but it would have been much, much easier and not so hard on the orchids outside if it had been 10 degrees as opposed to five. So the spike is still holding on, as you can see. This is what I was talking about. Persistent cold temperatures are really, really bad for a fire spike, especially when the wind is also going to cool down the temperatures even more. Still got its growing point, but you can see it really suffered as well. So I'm, you know, it's hit or miss. At least it wasn't long enough for it to snap because that could have also happened relatively easily as well. So my fires, yeah. This is a bad example of orchid growing. Anywho, moving on, I still have, I gotta watch the reflection of the table here, but I do still have my cymbidium buds, which is a good thing. At least we may get some blooms there. One bud over there in the back is going skyward because I had to change the location of the cymbidium in case the hedge was going to be trimmed inside the patio perimeter. I faced her to the white facade because of the reflection, thinking that maybe the light direction will be good enough even when the sun isn't out, but one bud had a different idea. That's fine. I don't think we're going to get botrytis. That was my main concern, that I may just have to cut the spikes off prematurely. But I'm going to go around. I want to avoid any glare from the sun that I can see on the screen. I don't want that to happen because I've got a new growth coming. See that? That is a huge surprise for me, especially seeing as this is not the newest bulb. Here is the growth that isn't blooming, that isn't producing a spike, but the bulb behind it is producing a new growth. That is awesome. It kind of also proves a point that Lynn Brooks made down in Australia. If you cut your spikes prematurely, you know, you enjoy the blooms, cut them prematurely, new growths will start sooner. That didn't work out for me last year, so my I tried that. I tried to take the blooms off prematurely. They did have botrytis because this is the time of year when it's really wet and humid right now. I've got 80% humidity, if you can believe it. Incredible. But anyway, so this is actually really interesting because it didn't bloom. 
This is the previous bulb and here is a new growth. So I'm hoping that is in focus. I was happy to see that. I can tell you I did not want to come to this side of the patio for the longest time because I did not want to be faced with the reality of what I knew was, you know, inevitable. Such a, such a shame. I'm just going to keep the camera low. Again, the sun would provide one heck of a glare. I'm hoping that maybe this week sometime the gardener will come and do the hedge. But what we're doing now, oh, hey, I lost one of the palm seedlings. I don't know why. I did treat for spider mites because this one was showing spider mites. Sorry, not orchid related intermission. <laughs> But it was treated for spider mites and it appears that we may have gone a little bit heavy handed with the insecticidal soap. Once again, I'm sorry for any background noise. As I mentioned, I'm on an open mic, but let's move around this way. And this is where it gets terrible. Can you see that? Look at cousin it. Look at the damage he has taken on board. All the leaves of the new growths have been affected. All of them. I didn't have him on the center table there on the east side of the patio because of the strong winds. I wanted to protect him on the east side here. And at least he gets, if there was some kind of protection, the wind was blasting from the east. I thought that this corner would be the best for him. But again, we had persistent nights of five degrees Celsius. Now the forecast is set that the nights should be 12 degrees Celsius and around 16 or 15 degrees during the day. It doesn't warm up enough on the patio because of the strong winds. We've got gale force winds continuously, persistently and constantly. And I'm sorry when I'm repeating certain adjectives. It's just, <clears throat> Those are the adjectives that apply this day and age. So what I wanted to do, but I didn't want to do that without showing you the impact of the conditions, the results it has brought forth. I want to now just, you know, after I film this and show you this, go and just groom him of his old bloom, see what leaves pop off. What a shame. Oh, I don't know what to do. I owe him not just an apology, but... <laughs> I'm so sorry, really, really sorry. He's not gonna to talk to me today, and I get it, I understand. I just hope he understands how sorry I am. What annoys me is it's the new growth leaves, of course, because they're more tender. I mean, there's enough of him, he'll make it, he'll just look scruffy. As will Stan the Man look scruffy as well. In my care video, sorry, let me get rid of these leaves. In my care video, I showed you the cold damage that was happening in between filming the footage and then a couple of days later. And now here we are, 10 days later, according to my filming time frame, but it's a 10 day gap. And you can see how the browning, this is an old leaf, it's okay. You know, the old leaves are fine, but these are new leaves right here. I'm trying not to cast a shadow. So that's the worst that I can see for now. Here's some more. I think, yep, here's another new leaf. Also going to crisp up. It's gonna take a very, very long time for him to crisp up, but you see, normally if the sun were this warm consistently, I wouldn't have him in bright sunshine, but I told you I'm coming out during a gap, a window where there is sun, because it is depressing to be out here and it is all cloudy, gloomy and horrible. That is depressing in itself and I didn't wanna add depressing pictures, images and footage of orchids that are struggling on top of depressing, nasty weather. So normally he wouldn't be in this direct sun, but because it's only just a small patch of sun, here he is also protected from the cold wind, just like cousin it. And then a little bit of sunshine, it's not going to hurt the leaves at all. So, yep, we're going to have a few reminders for the rest of the time of the 2023 year. Maybe even longer than that, depending on how quickly the leaves fall off. I would like to say that otherwise everything is doing well. 
I just don't want to wrap it up with that because I'm not feeling it. I don't want to be insincere here. I'm not feeling that everything is doing well. This is only after 10 days. Goodness me, what else are we going to see when this continues? Because it doesn't mean that the weather has gotten better. It's still cold during the day. I'm not getting warm pockets because of the cold wind. There's no balance. Even though the sun is shining now, even though I could have brought them out today, I didn't bring my orchids inside that are inside, outside simply because, yeah, it gets really cold. With this wind that we've been having, it's just been horrible, horrible cold. But again, here we go. The nobilies are holding up. They're doing what nobilies do best. Beautiful nubbins. These are the promises. These are the promises of better times to come. But I'm going to love and leave you right now because I just wanted to show you this. Who knows what's gonna come next? The weather forecast has been pretty, pretty accurate up to now. And I didn't want to miss this opportunity to at least document the repercussions of the weather, the conditions, because if I miss this window of opportunity, the next video is going to be that much longer. At least we've got these. Colmenara staying strong. I don't see any cold damage on the leaves. None whatsoever. Just wanted to show you a cool thing though, if I can, just to actually wrap this up, but show you something cool. Let's see if that will focus. Look at that root going into that bulb, the pseudobulb. Can you see that down there? I was gonna take the pseudobulb off and then I thought, no, what I'm gonna do is watch this and see if the root desiccates or burns because as the pseudobulb desiccates and gets older and then eventually dries up, I wanted to know if this is too acidic in order for roots to be able to so hold on and survive. That's why I have not removed this pseudobulb. I'm watching the root. <laughs> I know, silly things, but for me, super interesting. Anywho, now I'm going to love and leave you and say thank you so, so much for watching. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Meanwhile, on that one condition, know that you do stay safe. And <laughs> fingers crossed, we're through the worst. I doubt it, but I don't want to be negative Nancy. You know what I mean? Anyway, I appreciate your support. Thank you for being such a motivation and for being here on the channel. Take care. Bye.